Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to customize my Science Opener After Effects template. So first of all let's take a look at the content of this template. So after you downloaded the project and opened up the folder then you will see that there are actually three different After Effects projects included and we have the two main projects here and they require no plugins so the, the Plexa structure, the 3D structures, is pre-rendered in these versions. And then we have the original file that requires the Plexus plugin. So if you want to change the 3D structures of these models that I put in there, um, then you can use this version, but be aware that you need the Plexus plugin to use it. For the standard version of this template, you do not need any plugins and you have two different resolutions. You have a 4K resolution. This one also includes an uh, Ultra HD resolution and then you have this Full HD version right here. All of these versions are compatible with After Effects version 13 and this is After Effects CC 2015. So you can use it with After Effects CC 2015 and all later versions. If you want to use the same audio that I used in the preview video, then you can find it right here in the audio link. Now let's get started in After Effects with this customization. So let's open up one of these projects. Uh, I will use the 4K project right here. And if you use a newer version than CC 2015, then you will get this, this warning that it must be converted. No problem, just click OK and After Effects will convert it and the project will work fine. So by default, you see we are already in the setup composition and we can get started with the customization uh, process. First thing, if you want to use a logo in the end here at scene number five, it's called the end title, then you have to import your logo file. And I will show you how to do that. So you go to file and then choose import file. And let's navigate to a folder where my logo is. So in this case, I will just import an illustrator file with my logo and I go to the logo composition. If it's not already open in the timeline, you can find it right here. Just double click to open it up and let's drag in the logo. So you see it's a little bit too big, so I will just scale it down a bit, something like that. And I will just deactivate my placeholder here. Now, if I go back to my setup composition, you see now the logo is exchanged. Of course, we can change the layout, but I will show you this in the next step. So to edit your titles, you just can go through the scenes here. You see we have scene number one, we have scene number two, and these markers show exactly the spots in the timeline where this is visible here. And to edit the titles, let's start with title number one. You can simply go to the titles placeholders. They are all here in this folder. So title number one, let's open up this composition by double clicking on it and you see it's a simple text layer. So you can go to your text tool and then just enter your title. Then you can, of course, just use any font you want. You can resize it and colorize it however you want. So this way you can, and then you can, of course, also move it. Just select this layer. And if you don't see any controls, then maybe check whether your controls are activated. This is this little button here. Then we can just move it and go back to our setup to take a look. And now it's updated. So this is how you can enter your titles. And it's the same for all these titles. Now let me take a look at the last one, uh, scene number five. And actually we have to go to 13 seconds here to see it fully revealed. And this is exactly here, title number five uh, logo. So let's open up this one and you see there's the same title layer here that we can of course just manipulate and there is also a logo pre-comp. So I'll just change this layout a bit. So let's say I want my logo to be in the middle with a small tagline. So let's do that. First of all, I will scale this up to maybe 60% and I will just move it in the middle here. And you see that I have this cross here, I can line it up. Unfortunately in After Effects, if a layer is 3D, the align tools don't work. So if you try this, you will see that it doesn't work. It's a bit of a downside of 3D layers, but in this case, we need them so that we can create this cool fly-through animations. So I will just eyeball this. And now I will just put in my title here. And in this case, I will put in my web address, www, 
graphic and motion.com. And of course, this is now messed up because it's way too big. So let's just scale this down quite a bit, make it way smaller. Something maybe like 50 could be a nice value here. And I will just delete this one here. I don't need this. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. So let's make it a bit bigger. And now I see that I run into one problem and you see that my corners here are a little bit squashed. So I will just turn them off. You can turn them off by just deactivating this. And now I can position this title better. Actually, I think that it is still too big. So we'll scale it down a bit. So let's scale it. Like so. Doesn't look too bad. And now if I go to my setup composition, then you see in the end, I will just have my logo here. Actually, it's too small. So I will go in here, scale it up even further, maybe to 100. That's a bit better. And now let's put the title in here and make this bigger also. And then you see you have just a quite standard logo with tagline in the end of your animation. Okay, that looks really good. And this is nicely revealed in the end. Okay, so now you know how to enter your logo, how to enter the titles or edit the titles, and now I can show you how to create a nice look. We have two layers that are important here. First of all, we have a color setup and we have a color correction. So I want to mention that the color correction has quite an influence on the look here. If I turn this off for a moment, you will see that actually the colors look quite different. And this is because I used the Lumetri effect and uh, played around with these creative styles here. So you can play around with these. They are really cool here. For example, if you choose this one and deactivate it again, you see they create really nice looks. And the standard one is this one here. I also like this a lot. And yeah, if you if it's important for you that you have really precise color values, then just turn off the color correction and then you can put in your colors through these options here. So let me go through these quickly. First of all, we have this logo fill color. And if you take a look at my logo, when I imported it, it was colorized with colors. And here it is just white. And this is exactly this setting here. So you can just turn this on and then it will be in the original colors and you can turn it off and then it will be filled with color and you can specify the color right here. So you can also make it like this. I undo this now. Then we have the color of the points. The points colors are, let me go to a scene where we can see it right here, for example, on this virus 3D model here. We have the points and you can, for example, make these like purple, like so. So you can change the point colors here. Then we have the triangulation colors. The triangulation is the rest of the mesh here. So maybe if I make this like a bit of a turquoise style, then the crosses, these are these little design elements. You can change the color here. I will leave them at white. So if you change the dots here, you see these dots in the background here. If you change this color, it's a very subtle change. I will make them red. You see now they're red, but yeah, very subtle. I will leave it at white. The hexa pattern, that makes more difference. So if I change the hexa pattern here, maybe to greenish turquoise style, you see this changes the hexa pattern in the background. And then, of course, we have the background colors. And to change the background colors, let's start with background color 2 here. And maybe I want to create um, something like more in this direction here. Let's take a look. That looks quite good. Now, let's take over the color here and just darken it. So background color 1, something like this. Maybe a little bit more saturation in here. It looks actually quite nice. And then I can take over this color and just make it really dark for the two layers here. So you see that the colors are quite blended. So if you are not able to achieve the style that you want by using these colors, then just go to the background layer. And here you have blend values. So you can now just change this, uh, turn it down. And this way you will get a more precise representation of the colors that you put into the color controls. Just a little hint here.
And now let's go back to the color correction layer. And if I turn this on now, you see that this changes to look quite dramatically, but it also makes it very cool. So in this case, I really like this. It looks really cool. I would just probably change the hexa pattern a little bit. And yeah, that's a pretty cool style. Okay, so this is it. Um, customization is finished and now you can export your video. In the 4K version, I say there's also an Ultra HD version included and you see you have two export compositions and you can find them also right here in this export folder. The first one is 4K and here you can see the resolution and the second one is Ultra HD. So you can choose which one you want to export. Just choose this composition for 4K or this composition for Ultra HD and then you can go to Add to Media Encoder or Add to Render Queue, whatever you want. Okay, so this is it with this customization tutorial. Thank you very much for using my product and thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, then please feel free to contact me either through my video hive profile or through my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.